when we full set, you know, then you can see her and it's the full background. I and heard it said before that the... we work on our dreams so we can thrive. If not, we'll work on someone else's and then we'll die. So let me introduce myself to you. I am Wanda D. Hollis. Now the D is for Denise, a name given to me by my grandmother. And Wanda was given to me by my great-grandmother. So there you have it, Wanda Denise Hollis. Now some call me Wanda D. and my close friends and family call me WD. But either way, I'm just passing through. You see, I came by to inspire you to live beyond your dreams, to go past the clouds and travel on Mars if that's what you so desire to do. Let me assure you that I, I truly believe in you. Your visions and hopes are seeds planted in you, put there for a reason perfectly designed for you. I believe that the universe is simply waiting on you. Let me ask you a question. What are your desires? What is that thing, you know that thing that burns inside of you? That thing that nags you? What is that dream that used to ride with you? I am here to tell you. I am here to encourage you. I am here to let you know that it's not too late to take that dream off the shelf and give birth and let it kiss the earth and then spread it as though it was a dessert. I am enough. I am enough and yes you are enough you you and you too are enough now live knowing and believing that there is nothing absolutely nothing you can't do why because together we are more than enough Hey, 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 hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Wanda D, the motivational queen. You have joined in on the I Am Enough talk show. Yes, right here in the heart of Atlanta, right here on Status Network. We're under Manifest TV. And if you're here, I just want to say welcome, 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 welcome. And also, if you're watching, if you tune in from Facebook or uh, we're on a, quite a few different platforms. Let me just name them all off to you. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram Live. We're on YouTube and we're on Periscope. Listen, there's no way for you to miss our show, and we're also on Roku. So if you syndicate it in or if you, um, you know, watch it from any of those platforms, please reach out, tag somebody, and tell them that it's on. Yes, the I Am Enough talk show where your dreams matter is on. And I have a live studio audience. I'm waiting for them to get rowdy. See, that's all it takes. Just put the word out. Just put the word out. Well, guys, guess what? This is our um, Black History Love Show. Yes, I combine all that together. Why? Because I don't know about you, but I'm Black 365. But, you know, they gave us this month, so we're going to make the milk stuff. And we're going to celebrate. We got some, um, some interesting people in the studio today. We have a guest that's joining us all the way from Costa Rica, Miss Dawn. James, she's going to come in here and talk about this self-love and give us some tips on how we can serve ourselves. Because you know what? It's very difficult to serve someone else if you don't first serve yourself. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. yes. And, um, and also we have Miss Belize Spivey in the building. She, is, she was on our show about two years ago, right around this time. This was the love show about two years ago. And she was on here talking about her book. She's coming back to give us an update plus some information that she has going on, some other things that she has going on um, with her business and with her affairs. So she's just coming in here to update us on what's going on with her. And... It's a lot of ands going on. Now, we have our women in business, our I Am Enough talk show women in business. They're going to lay out what they're passionate about. They're going to talk about um, black history and who stands out the most to them, give you some updates on what's going on in their business, and let you know how you can work with them if you have a need for their services. So I'm excited. I'm ready to get, on, get going. And I just want to let you know that if you have any questions for any of our guests, please don't hesitate to call in to four seven zero two five one 
4647. So all you got to do is call in and ask any questions. But in the meantime, in between time, let everybody know that we're on and it's going down right here live. What, where are we on uh, Cleveland Avenue? We're in the heart of Atlanta. So if you're in the heart of Atlanta or if you somewhere close, just come on up, pull up. And if you know the Batman code, then all you got to do is press it. If not, please just send us an email and we'll give you that Batman code. Because we can't give out this Batman code to everybody. I'm sorry. We just can't do it. But we do it with the select the VIP. So if you're a VIP, I think you are a VIP. I see some out there yeah you a vip so call in okay so let's see is miss is miss don james is she in the building hello hello ah, i hear her there she is yes miss don james i'm so glad that you are here today to meet with us thank you all the oh, way from yeah. costa rica yes i'm sending some heat waves your Thank way. you. We need it because, you know, I almost hung up on you and I wasn't even really talking to you on the phone. But Dawn sent me a message talking about she's trying to cool off, that it was so hot that she said, I'm just trying to figure out how to stay cool today. It's hotter than it's been in a long time. We're jealous. OK, we're jealous. <laughs> You, you know what? I want you to enjoy it. You can enjoy it. <laughs> Listen, Don, I'm so glad that you're here. And um, for those of you who don't know her, she is um, just a fantastic lady. Don, give them your, your website right quick because I want them to have that up front. Absolutely. Yeah, so one of the things I do is uh, we host wellness retreats here in Costa Rica. The website is be, it, be well retreats. Be well retreat.com. Okay, so she hosts um, uh, retreats, wellness retreats, and that's what we're going to talk about. But first, let me tell you all something that we do a wake up winning call Monday through Friday on Facebook. So anybody on Facebook watching and uh, if you want to tune in, it's a group called Wake Up Winning for Entrepreneurs. This past week, we celebrated self-love and self-care. The reason why I did that was because of it's kind of hard to focus on your money if you can't get your health right. It's kind of hard to focus on anything outside of you externally if you don't take care of what the inside looks like and what it feels like and these emotions that we go through. So I dedicated last week to self-love, self-care. Don was one of the people that joined me on that platform to talk about and give some tips up. And also, um, she's gonna she's here today to let you know of a very special event that we have coming up in August. And Don already have uh, Miss Miss LaCale Farley says she's in. She already says she's in. So you know, All there's right. only now there's only like seven more seats available. So um, I wanted her to come in and talk about why this retreat is so important and also talk about um, just how people can get more information and get going with everything so Don give us some give us give us the word sure you know Wanda it is so vital today we are bombarded with technology distractions uh, so many more choices than we had even 20 years ago so I'm holding space for people to take a break to pause, to breathe, to recenter themselves and really remember the importance of honoring yourself. Because to me, honoring yourself means so many things, right? Take care of yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And so it's important for us to really step back from the day-to-day -day distractions and appreciate ourselves and that's what we're doing in costa rica august 10 to 16. one of the things i like to emphasize it is very important that we understand our own energy systems so one of the right. workshops i'll be teaching people is how to connect we have three major energy systems in our bodies and you know many times we're feeling tired and sluggish and you don't have the energy to get through the day. And part of that is because we haven't learned how to connect and tap into our own power centers. 
So that's one of the workshops I'll be teaching in Costa Rica. Um, it's just a fantastic week. We've got the perfect balance of relaxing, healthy movement, sightseeing, pampering, of course. We're going on a chocolate tour. We're gonna make chocolate the old fashioned way like they did 200 years ago. Uh, so we're also gonna be reconnecting with nature. And that's a big part of de-stressing. I'll be teaching women how to reduce stress, reduce anxiety, and tune into their own energy and their power center so that they have the energy they need to get through the day. Um, we have a wonderful week planned of excursions, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place. I think for me, the natural beauty of Costa Rica is what makes it so special. So I do hope you'll check out Honoring You Self-Care Retreat, August 10 to 16. The website is befitbewellretreats.com. Dawn, I got a question. What are those three energy cycles that you talk about? Well, we have three major power centers in our body, and I'm going to actually teach people how to connect, open, activate them. Uh, one is just below the navel. In Eastern culture, it's called the Tantien. And I'm going to show you how to connect to that. That's a very strong energy center. We're going to do some exercises. The second one is the heart. The heart is very powerful. There's a whole science behind heart math and the electromagnetic power of our heart. But we're going to be doing some energetic work with the heart. And the third energy center is our intuition. Um, again, in certain cultures, that's denoted here. We're talking about the third eye. Mm -hmm. But it's also about inner knowing. It's about having clarity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're faced with all these choices every day, how do you tune into your highest truth? And how do you quickly filter out all the distractions and get to the real root of what you need to do? So I'll mm -hmm. be teaching quite a few uh, self-care workshops for emotional wellness, physical wellness, spiritual wellness, mental wellness. So it's a full, full round week. That's amazing. And and also, um, I don't know, I don't think you heard, I didn't hear the one of my best part, and that is that we'll have our chefs on our beck and call. <laughs> yes, we have so, a wonderful cook. We're going to be spoiled. Ladies, no dishes. <laughs> no dishes. And she basically said, this is what Don told me. She said, all you need is to get there. After you've gotten there, that's it. You don't need anything else unless you just want to be out shopping or something like that. But other than that, you just come and you're going to be pampered, taken care of. I heard about how they're going to wrap our body in these coca leaves. <laughs> There's a couple of things you might be checking out. There's a body wrap, body scrub. Every woman will have two spa treatments of their choice. This is to relax and recharge, ladies. So we want you to feel like royalty for the week. Our retreat is all-inclusive. So once you pay that retreat fee, we got it covered. Uh, meals, accommodation, spa treatment, all the tours, all the activities, airport pickup, airport drop-off. It is a stress-free you are royalty, so we're going to treat you like royalty. And, and you said, well, well, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm, okay. I'm still stuck on the thank you. And you said this, that um, we will not want to leave. And when we come back, we will be a new person. The, the, <laughs> I would say, yes, everything we do is about making a shift. So when I hold space for the group, it is to allow them to remember not just how to honor yourself for the week, how to honor yourself on a daily practice. So you're going to be taking home tools and techniques so that whether it's five, 10 or 30 minutes a day, you're going to continue self-care and self-love. That's what it's all about. It's not just for seven days. Yes. Let me see. I was, I was trying to, let me just address Facebook for a minute. We have a uh, Janelle Harris watching Janelle's all the way in Florida. Hey, Janelle. And um, Evangelist Carol uh, Davis is watching. Hello, guys. Send us some hearts, loves, and like. We like the way they come across our screen when we're chit-chatting. 
<laughs> yep. And um, yeah. Don, I think I have some ladies here in the studio. I don't know if any one of these ladies had any questions, but um, if they do, it, raise raise your hand if you got a question. Come on, don't be shy. Okay, good. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me get you a mic. Um, I'm gonna get you get her mic. So then, if she has any questions, we want to get those questions answered. And this is what I noticed. I noticed that we as women we take care of everybody else first and we kind of put ourselves on the back burner for everything that we do. And, and to me, um, I had an awakening, uh, not long ago. And I said, you know, I have to make my, my health, my priority and my mental, you know, fitness, my health fitness, a priority. And, and this takes with, um, just how we get up every morning, we wake up winning. We take, we take on, the world, you know, and we don't have a release. One thing I used to do a lot, I haven't did in late uh, lately, but I used to every Sunday when I left the show, I would go to Jeju for a day, you know, to like, because the show takes, you know, it's a lot of work that's involved and a lot of energy that I use during the show. So I would run there right after I leave here and give myself that downtime on Monday. And then I started doing wake up winning. So it was like, I didn't have a day off and I said, okay, well, I'm gonna have to readjust this. So can you just tell us like, can you really, really let people understand why it's so important, especially as women? I mean, no disrespect to our men cause we love them. And I really think that, you know, we all need to figure out how to get along and work together and build our family structure but why is it so important for women to pay close attention to their health you know women have a tendency to hold a lot of things in okay we're socialized to be quiet don't speak up right and so we tend not to express holding this in causes disease you know and we're seeing so many young women especially 30s etc you know, going through things that normally we wouldn't see till you were maybe 60 or 70. It's important to find a way to release that stress and more importantly, practice, have a daily routine, a daily regimen, a daily ritual where you are rebalancing yourself. You know, I talk about mental stress. And as you know, when you've got multiple things going on as women, family, you know, partner, uh, appointments, kids' homework, this, that, teacher, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. So how, right. how to find the coping skills to clear your mind, the importance of even meditating at the end of the day, give your mind a break. Because mm-hmm. if your mind is agitated, your thoughts are not clear, you're not going to make good decisions, right? We get impatient, we get anxious, we get depressed. So I, I'm teaching people how to honor the mind the body, the energy system, and your spirit, because the whole package is needed. And we have to be able to cope and deal with things in a balanced way so we make better decisions. You know, I keep saying no no drama, Obama. We don't want to continue patterns of behavior that cause us frustration. And it's really all about balancing every part of yourself and having a balanced life. Yes. So it's important. Great. Okay, we have a question for you. Hello, my name is Samantha Fitch, and I recently wrote a book um, pertaining to overcoming infertility, and I was able to overcome infertility naturally. And so do you address that in your, I guess, in your work? Do you find a lot of women come to you trying to overcome infertility naturally? Not specific on, not a specific medical condition. I, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not a medical practitioner, but... What I see, I see certain patterns where people are either extremely anxious or they're very depleted in energy or um, they're lacking a lot of confidence. You know, the I am enough. One thing I love about this show, it's to remind us that we are complete and we are whole, you know, despite what's going on around us. So to answer your question, um, not a specific okay. uh item like that but i do see holistically um people either very anxious Mm -hmm. um or or very fragmented they're they're losing energy they're lacking energy and for me it's all about teaching people how to tune in Mm -hmm. and open up some of the own energy that we have 
so that they can live a more wholesome life. Um, I'd be really curious to know what you did because it sounds quite fascinating that it sounds like you've tapped into your own inner healing ability. And that's powerful, you know, that is very powerful to tune in to what we already have mm -hmm. and have faith and, and trust and courage. I think that's fabulous. And the one thing that was uh, okay. the question was um, when you talked about the energy um, parts of the body underneath the stomach and in between the forehead and the forehead, those are kind of like pressure points that I used <laughs> that actually, so I connected it to, wow. so didn't even know. I guess wow. I was just bringing energy oh, to that area by, by massaging. <laughs> so yeah. That's what oh, triggered my question. I love it. That's, you know what, that's you tuning into your, mm -hmm. your divine wisdom, what we call intuition. You were guided intuitively mm -hmm. to work on your own energy system. And, and that's the power of knowing this. And I think that's what I find is really rich to, te to teach others how they, they themselves can become their own healers because ultimately we, we are fully loaded with everything we need. Some of us just need a little nudge in the a right reminder, direction. A reminder, we got another question. India, do you have a question? Hi, thank you so much for the work that you do. I think this is tremendous. My name is India and I work in different environments. Um, you know, we all here are trying to save and change the world, right? So I had a question for you. When you find yourself in, in an environment that I guess you can, you have an intuition that it's not quote unquote healthy. Like it might seem like there's some energies there that you're kind of struggling with. Like, how do you, um, like, do you teach on how to deal with those different energies and you know, like, yes, I, do. Yes. I use the word spiritual, but what I, what I'm referring to is energy systems. Um, there's two techniques I'm going to be sharing on this self care retreat that specifically deal with that issue because we are electromagnetic beings, right? We attract and repel all the time. So I'm going to be teaching people in their own field how to clear it, and more importantly, how to keep it at a high vibration, what I call repel. You know, the brighter you are, the more you repel things that are negative, and you will see differences around you because the, sh the brighter you shine, it changes how other people relate to you. I'll also be addressing environmentally what you can do to create peace or calm or cooperation, which is huge. You know, a lot of our frustration in the corporate world is because of lack of cooperation or lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. um, so I will share with the people attending the retreat, the spiritual aspect of self-care is all about your energy system and understanding even within your aura, how to keep it clear, keep it clean, how to repel negativity, because that's a big part of how we relate to the world. Um, our aura has a very special, several special functions, and most of us aren't in tune with what that means. So that's going to be part of our workshop as well. That's okay. a great question. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. it is a great question. I think we got one more question. Um, Ms. LaCale, she has a question. Um, I'm LaKel Farley. I have one quick question for you. Um, what would you advise women that have completely depleted um, their gunk? Uh, what, what are some two quick uh, steps that you would give to get them motivated back on, on track? Sorry, they, they depleted their? Depleted their energy, their motivation to move forward. So if, if it's an external, there's, well, to answer your question, there's two parts to that. It can be an external issue or an internal issue, internal. right? Yes, because some, those patterns of behavior that I talk about that we need to break, mm -hmm. sometimes um, like workaholism, which I'm a victim of myself, I was guilty of that. Sometimes we get into our own personal patterns and behavior that is causing that depletion. So it's to tune into that. Um, one of the workshops we're going to be doing is inner work. We're going to be doing a little bit of inner work um, because it's important to really get to the root of some of our tendencies and behaviors. If it's an external issue that's causing depletion of energy, it could be the people you live with. It could be the people you work with. Then the way you get around that is going to have to be looking at your state of mind and how we can change the way we respond to certain things that may be causing us to lose energy. 
But the bottom line is, once you understand your own energy system, and, you, and you've and you also recognize you're depleting your energy, I'm going to share with you some techniques and tools to get that energy back. That's the key. You've got to build yourself up so that you're able to deal with the environment that you're in. And when it comes to the external causes of maybe feeling depleted, it's about your mindset. So again, mental wellness is so important in order for us to change the lens that we look at the world, change the way we interact with others. It has to start in the mind. So internally, it's getting back your energy, which I'll be sharing with you some techniques. And externally, it's going to have to be changing your mindset or shifting the way you respond to other people. You know, I often say if people around you are not building you up, they're tearing you down. It's time to look the okay, other way. Let them go. Yeah, let them go. Uh, if you cannot leave that situation, then you're going to have to shift your mindset and also, you know, associate in other circles that are not right. the same. So there's things you can do. Don, do me a favor and give us the website again. And if anybody's watching on Facebook, can you please just type it in to Facebook as well? Um, give us that website again. So the self-care retreat is at B, the letter B, F-I-T, the letter B, W-E-L-L, retreats.com, befitbewellretreats.com. And you'll have all the information there. It's all inclusive, August 10th to 16th. Look forward to seeing you. It is self-care, soul care, mind care, everything in between. And it's a fabulous week of relaxation, connecting with nature. We're going to be doing some pampering and definitely checking out the beautiful Pacific Coast in Costa Rica. I appreciate you, Don. And also, I just want to let everybody know that it is only eight slots available for the entire um, retreat because she only takes down very small groups. So um, I, I'm just saying that I know I'm going and I know a couple people have expressed that they're going. If we can go there, down there um, and we were talking about hula hooping uh, <laughs> last on Friday, you know, and it, it, it's like so Don said, OK, well, we're going to do some hula hooping. So <laughs> like. <laughs> We're just going to have fun because I think it's time for us to really put ourselves first. And I'd like to thank you, Don, for helping us do that. And you all, please connect with her on Facebook. Go to her website. Check it out. She does a lot of amazing work. But um, for right now, today, I just want to say thank you so much. I admire you and I respect you for everything that you're doing. Um, Don has a lot of information, guys. What's your is that your regular website? The, the B fit? No, the regular, the best way to get to me, including the retreats, is through my name, dawnjames.ca. That's the easiest okay, way to so get to me. Okay, so y'all got that. Just reach reach out to her and she has tons of information so i look forward to seeing you this week on the um i am an uh, where we're and on see i have too many things going on in my mind on the wake up winning thank you net <laughs> we i look forward to seeing you this week on the wake up winning because we're going to be giving them more tips more information plus she's going to be walking us on that the beaches of the pacific are we on the pacific <laughs> Ocean. That's the Pacific Ocean. So yeah, we're gonna do some sunsets this week. So I know y'all gonna appreciate that. So thank you, Don. Thank you, Wanda. Big love, big hugs to you. Queen. I accept and it. Mm -hmm. week. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. So guys, I just want to say that um, you know we have to really, really take advantage when uh, when opportunities come up for and and I would say in a small circle like this one wouldn't you rather hang out with some people that you like you know on any of your trips I mean like really <laughs> So um I'm I'm excited about it you know cuz um it's going to be different is I I don't I don't expect to leave and come back the same you know anytime we walk into places we should expect to go in there to have a great experience we're going to take a quick break coming back is going to be Miss Belize Spivey she's going to talk about her book y'all going to have a chance to chit chat with our amazing other co-authors and um, co-hosts I mean we have a packed house I don't even some of these people have snuck in here I don't know how they got in but I'm glad to see them and um, I can't wait for you all to stay 
stick with us while we come back. We're going to take a quick short break. And when we come back, we're going to bring up Miss Belize Spivey. Thanks. Live and learn. Young and dumb or older and hopeful. The stages are unique yet similar life. We all travel our own path, journey into what we would like to believe is prosperity, facing challenges and in search for victory. But how do we rest? Rest into the knowing that life is purposeful from the moment of conception. Beliefs mostly passed down from generation to generation, young and dumb, or older and hopeful. Somehow experiences don't always make it easy and less painful. As my mind closes the door to yet another relationship, I drift into my own love chronicles. You know the kind that starts out hot and steamy, bodies melt like butter, conversations seemingly have an unsurmountable connection. Then somewhere between kisses and back rubs and orgasms, fallouts happen and everything gets questioned. Does he love me? Do I love him? Why did I do this? Why did he do that? Hangups and breakups. How do you spell relief? How do you say another one bites the dust? Love just doesn't seem to last for me. But throughout all the fallouts comes victory. The victory of understanding myself just a little bit more. I'm learning my levels of tolerance, flexibility, and endurance. My levels of saying enough is enough and too much is way too much. I can make it without you and you can make it without me. Now what? Picking myself up, dusting myself off, young and dumb or older and hopeful. You see, it's really all the same. We are trying to outlive the generational curse passed down and picked up unknowingly. So, to those still listening, let's journey into our own fantasy of, well, you decide. Remembering the curse has been broken, we no longer have to live in the shadows of what our parents did. Let's live, live, and live, believing that there is so much to give. And love, love, love. Throughout all that's said and done, whether young and dumb or older and hopeful, stick around, cause surely the best is yet to come. Young and dumb or older and hopeful, live and learn, because surely the best is yet to come. like the way I say that <laughs> <laughs> they like they don't know how to take me <laughs> they will figure it out though I am back I want to be the motivational queen yes and this is the I am enough talk show where your dreams matter and um we just had Dawn on she was giving us some amazing information guys please follow her like her and uh connect with her because she is a true she's true to what she does uh, that's all I can say um, and joining me is this lovely lady. I, I met her about two years ago. It's been over two years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because she sent me a video the other day. It was, was it the last week or 
sometimes. She sent me a video of a testimony of her coming on to the, mm -hmm. you know, our meeting. And I, I was blown away. I cried. I was like, oh, my God. You cried I did. Oh. I did cry. She, you know, she, that's how you know you old when they call you Miss Wanda. You know, when you're trying to, when you're trying to do what the young kids do and then they be referring to you as Miss Wanda, you know you be like, I'm oh, my God. Miss Wanda, yes. Let me take my fan out because I am getting hot up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here. I was so I was so overwhelmed because this is what happened and I'm just going to give y'all a quick story. I met this young lady. This is Belize Spivey. Um her book has another last name, but we're going to talk about that too. Oh yeah. But <laughs> this is Belize. I can take my glasses off. Now, listen here, y'all. Y'all already know how I am. I have to put my glasses on when I got to read. I got to take my glasses off when I want to see. It's a difference. It's a difference. So <laughs> I want to look at you. So about over two years ago, I was scrolling through Instagram. And um, she was on Instagram, and she was talking, and she was just so um, passionate about what she was talking about. And she was talking about... Um, uh, overcoming herpes and the wear and the stigmas of it, and she was just so passionate. And I was just watching her now, see, because I have for some of you that may or may not know, I've been in this space of media for over ten years, and my passions are to connect with other people that are passionate about what they do. So she impressed me because she was just all in, and she was like, just giving it all she got. Like I said, give it all you got. She was giving it all she got. So I reached out to her, and I said, listen, I would love to have you on my show. You know, she we inboxed back and forth, and she was doing – and another thing is um, she's, she does a lot of work on YouTube. And at the time, you know, I still haven't caught up to YouTube the way I want to. And I was saying, man, I want to learn how – you know, I want to get active on YouTube. And she was like – Miss Wanda, she always been calling me Miss Wanda. Miss Wanda, you just got to do it. Just, I said, well, I know that. You know, like, it's like you know all of the secrets, right? But you're just like, oh, my God, I got to do it. So, anyway, she came onto the show. Now, I had a show two years ago that was right around this time because it was Valentine's Day. It was the first Sunday in February. And we were talking about love because it was our love show. February was our love show you know, slash black history. And the reason why that stood out so much is because it's the game also. Y'all know that, that the game. first Sunday in February is always the Super Bowl game. So I'm competing with the Super Bowl. But it didn't matter because our studio was packed and it was the Super packed. Bowl. It was good. So, so she was on there with a lot of other people. Matter of fact, um, April was on there. You all met April last month. She mm -hmm. was a part of that um, meeting. And... Uh, what impressed me the most about Belize was because of her energy. She was so excited. I have to often tell her to calm down and breathe and, you know, like, get the message out. I'm better now, Ms. Wong. I know. I'm looking <laughs> at you. you. You're really better. So, um, so but, but I say this to everybody because when you, when you really go after the things that you love to do, nobody can tell you nothing different mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter you know I have people that like to criticize people well you know you could do it a little bit on this side you could do it a little bit on that side and I say listen here don't mess with a person when their decision is to do something we'll figure out how to perfect it but let's be clear perfection never even counts what counts is consistency. Yeah. See, consistency beats everything. Consistency and creativity trumps everything. So true. So. That's so true. <laughs> we meet again. Once again. <laughs> and so she called me up and she said, Miss Wanda, it was placed on my heart. You want to tell the story? Okay. So okay, you tell the story. In the beginning of the year, I just felt like it's certain people you need to serve. Miss Wanda go all her way. Anybody in this room know Miss Wanda. She go out her way for everybody. I don't remember the story of how she reached out to her. All I knew Mima and Wanda was tight after that. She said, if you meet me, we together forever. <laughs> That's what I said. That was so our I was motto. Like, With that being said, we hooked that to him. So I reached out to her and I told Miss Wanda, it would put on my heart that I need to serve you. I asked her, I told her, I said, I don't know what it's supposed to be. Don't be quick. Think about it. And let me know. It took her like two weeks <laughs> to come back. And when she came back, she was still like, well, I'm not quite sure because I got so much going on. But but she finally let me start to serve her. And it's been an honor so far to serve Miss Wanda. Thank you. 
Thank you. You know, you can't you can't possibly un- know how that makes you feel when somebody calls you because I hadn't talked to her in like what over a year. It was, it was over a year. year. So much right, because because so much had happening with her and with myself. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of you knew that I had went through a lot of personal challenges with my family, and um, she was going through challenges and with her family and with her situations. I mean, what she said to me, what rung out the most is when you said to me, is no matter what I was going through, you still, every time you would call and check on me, because I still called her. We, still called. I called her and said, hey, you do, you are right over there. I sent her a message or something like that. She said, so even though you were going through what you were going through, you still took the time out. Well, see, and this is what I know about us as people. These are our choices that we make. We can choose to stay in contact with people yeah. or we can choose not to. That's, That's it. True. It's just real simple. And a lot of times when we're um, when we're faced with different challenges, we think that it's um, it's 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 a reset or we have to just stop doing something. But really, it's the reason why you should push past it. So let's talk about this book and what gave you the give us the title of the book. Mm-hmm. And oh, then I'm, I'm asking you, <laughs> and Ned, do me a favor, keep Belize event up because that's why she's on today to talk about this event. Um, yeah, so all right. So my book is Overcoming What Can't Be Cured: Living Beyond Herpes. Um, this book been out since 2016, and when I decided to write the book, I had been living with herpes for seven years. Then, as we know, now we're completion. So to me, that was significant. God said, "Okay, it's time." No more playing, no more dragging, no more being stuck. Um, I said this to my group today. I said, stuck is not a lifestyle. And as women, we can get so stuck. And I was stuck for seven years. Yes, I was dating. Yes, I was uh, having sex. Yes, I was doing all that. But I was still mentally and spiritually stuck. So when it gets to this point where he was like, it's time for you to write this book. It's time for you to simply tell your story. I didn't see any African-American women telling a story. I'm not even going to tell no story. I didn't see it. And I was like, I'm not saying that I have to connect with me, but I need to connect with me. Right. You know, as much as we was like, no, I can connect. No, I needed to connect with me. I was like, I need you to understand what I go through every day. I want you to understand what I deal with my family, my, my struggles, all of that. I need you to understand it. So the moment you understand, I know I can get through it. Right. You know, so when I did that, I wrote the book. The book wasn't easy. If anybody wrote a book, <laughs> Miss Wanda walked too. It's not, and more coming. So it's not easy. But I wrote the book. It came out, and everything just took off. It absolutely took off. And Miss Wanda was the first one who let me get on her show and talk about the book. And I was like, I'm so excited. I get to go on a talk show. This is just the beginning. So I was so pumped about talking about it because I knew it was some other women who needed the book. Um, and after that, things took off. Miss Wanda was my first time getting on the show. And shortly after that, you start this year. Boom, boom. Boom. And now Boom. you're doing this tour. <laughs> yes, I'm doing this tour, which I'm so excited. I think I told you I wanted to do a tour with you my did. book. Um, and this timing is perfect. At this point, like she was telling us early, alignment. I was at a place where I had to shift. I had to let people go. Um, when I wrote this book, I was married. I ended up having to get a divorce. And I thought, divorce, my life skyrocketed. They ain't for everybody to take. Everybody ain't supposed to get divorced. I'm going to say that now. So please don't think just because your life ain't going like you want it. That, that they ain't may it. cause for a divorce. But because <laughs> because some, things, some things happen as you were, first of all, like she talked about in the book, how, um, you know, and, and you can, you, you got the, the, uh, the, the herpes in college, right? Yes, I did. I was a sophomore. And, and you didn't know, and like, I was watching you the other day and you was talking about, you know, forgiveness. And so do you think that at the time when you wrote the book, do you think that you had still held on to some unforgiveness? What? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know. Sometimes you think you're over stuff, but over time you realize you're not. Um, When I wrote the book, I knew I was writing the book just to tell the story. Mm -hmm. But you weren't healed. I wasn't healed. I wasn't healed because clearly when I wrote the part about my husband, I didn't feel all of that. You know, I didn't feel everything I felt. But at the end of the day, it was just to tell the story. And over the years, since you don't know me, I have grown so much. I have healed so much. It's still areas that I'm healing in. But sometimes we think it's just a one-time shop, one-stop shop for healing. No, it's a constant thing because mm-hmm. sometimes you don't realize things are there. Right, right, right. What I what I love about your platform, and, and this is for anybody, tell them how 
to get connected with you right now on your platform? All right, to get connected to me, the best way is social media. I'm a social media jockey. She so the has best it going on. <laughs> so Facebook is great, Belise Spivey. Instagram, Belise.Spivey. And you connect there. Also, YouTube, I have 200 and probably 13 videos pertaining to herpes. You get everything you need. You don't pretty much need to go nowhere else after that. Um, but I'll tell you whatever you need and just go on YouTube, Belise Spivey. And why is this such a stigma? Let's talk about that for mm. real quick. Why is it such a stigma? I know, uh, and you said something real powerful the other day. You were talking about how, you know, people like to put herpes and AIDS in the same category, and it's nowhere near the same category, but the stigma is so critical to people putting it both in the same category because really herpes is like a like pretty much like a cold that you just keep getting over and over again so you have to really realize identify with what this what there are the triggers in your body mm -hmm. what you're going through that way but why is that why is the that from your reason, from your opinion lack of knowledge the same way we i like i like that people sometimes put it in the box because then i got a, something to compare and split down the middle right. i say you see hiv and you see us. You see us. We're still living in, in hiding. We're still, sh we're still, you know, in shame. But HIV, we got prep. You know, we got all this extra funding. We even got to a point in our president is like, look, it's time to do something about it. You know, now all we're getting all that. But they were in the same place we were. And if we want to see a difference, we got to go and have to walk behind them and do the same thing. It's people die. We had ashes still on the president's lawn because people's like, folks' family was dying. You didn't have to have the virus for people to care. And when right. it comes to herpes, it seems like the only people care is the people who have it. And I feel like until we change us mm -hmm. just caring about the person who have it or me just caring because I have it and I care because she have it and she got it and I know she's struggling, then we're not going to really see the change. Right. And then we need the education behind it. The information is so out of whack. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's what, that's what, um, and I'm telling y'all, if you are, and this is not just to learn about this, um, uh, it's not a disease. What Now, what is it classified under? They don't really, they don't like see, it. Because I, that's I, see, I know, that's the, look, the, the look. thing about it is. <laughs> okay, like, it's classified under STD or SCI. Okay. But, as we know, it's not included in the panel because they really don't want to say that because right. many kids are getting kissed. We kissed on family, depending on your culture, that is just greetings. So we don't want to say, oh, a four-year-old have herpes because of a sexual encounter. That's going to make us trigger to think they don't got touched or anything like that. And that's not the case. We just we all kiss on our kids. You know, mm -hmm. so I really believe the, the struggle is they don't want to say that, but it is being transmitted through sexual contact. So really, they just kind of like, it's out there, but we don't want to say that because we don't want to freak parents out when they come in here and we got cold sore on their child. So it's kind of risky. But it is falling under an STD. Okay. It's labeled so, as STD. So, so for those, and see what I like about this, and what I what I try to do is I try to bring y'all the right information, you know, and then you can go further into study. You can hook up with some of the people that I bring on here. And trust me, everybody that I bring on has, first of all, been vetted. They know their area because, again, I'm only trying to talk to people that are passionate about what they do. And if you're passionate about what you do, then you'll go above and beyond finding out the right information. You know, like you said, it doesn't have to be your walk. But if you don't know somebody that has an STD, then you're probably not really being honest with yourself. Or that because part. everybody knows somebody, you know, yeah. and if it's not you. And then what I like is the fact that you help people you give them the words to say to help them tell these stories and also to be free enough without the guilt. Yes. So what are some of the things that you encourage people to do once they find out that they have an STD? First thing I tell you, feel. You need to feel. As women, we, we hold we, we talk hold. about this all day. And it's true because we do. We'll allow, anybody who have dealt with a health scare, I don't care if it's mild. The first thing you do, you cry, and then after a while, oh, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. And you're not okay. I, I say cry. She's like, I don't want to cry. I said, no, cry. I'm just going to sit here. And I just let them cry. I said, you need to get it out. If you've ever been to a counselor or heard a counselor, you got to feel to heal. You really do because thing, our feel. feelings let us know that it's something wrong. I always use it as an alarm. It lets you know if you happy or you sad. Or if you sad, okay, why? And sometimes I ask the lady, okay, you're crying, why? 
Why right. are you crying? And they said, I don't know. I said, well, you need to keep crying until you figure that out. We need an idea <laughs> why you're crying because knowing why is important because then as soon as you know why, then we can move forward. Right. So the first thing I tell them, allow yourself to feel. The first day I call that shock mode. The first two, three weeks is shock mode. Now you just, you like, I can't believe my life has changed. I can't believe I can't do what I want. Sadly to say, you shouldn't have been. Let's really be honest. You shouldn't have been. But we do believe sometimes that we're doing everything right. Mm -hmm. You go to the doctor. You're getting tested. You're like, I did everything right. I really did. And you st it still happens it's because sex is risky. And that's something we're not taught. They tell Period. us to do it, but they're not telling us it's a risky thing every time. Married, not married. It's risky. And until we understand and that click in our mind is risky, we won't understand the, the, the seriousness of having right. sex with somebody. But I tell them first, Feel yourself out. After that, educate yourself. After getting your education, then you need some support. And that's and that's key. And you know what? These are actually life tools. Mm -hmm. Real, when you think about it, these are life tools. <laughs> these are see the thing about it. It's kind of like leadership. It doesn't matter whether you're leading a pack of dogs or a, you know or or an ice cream you know stand. It doesn't matter. Leadership is leadership. Um, life skills is life skills, and you have to first. We have to feel in order to heal, and we have to feel everything. I mean, I don't care what it is. Grieving of a job, of a loss of a job, grieving of a relationship, of you know whatever it is. Um, a change. I know this isn't has nothing to do with that, but I know people that that have to move around a lot. They grieve. Mm -hmm. Their children end up so affected by them moving constantly, and they don't realize it. And then at the end of the day, at the end of them twenty one years of moving from place to place to place, it's like they're they they made a certain type of created a certain type of person. And like, well, what happened? Well. Then they show, whereas when they, every time they left, they didn't really leave in a wholesome way. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like mm -hmm. the family say, come on, let's go. We gone because this is what we're doing. And it's, it, it wasn't enough time for people to make those adjustments, like understanding that it's, it could be celebratory instead of like a whole rush in the middle of the night and starting over and all this other kind of stuff. So I thank you for that, you know, because those three things, feeling, education and um support. getting a support and that's what we all need for everything that we mm -hmm. do you need to find out who is in your support system who supports you for everything that yes. you do and that's how we grow right yeah absolutely. yeah so i want to know is there anyone here that has any questions for belize before she takes off and and also this this tour this is not just a book signing you're going to be doing workshops and presentations so this is very educational yes the first one starts next week this week. Well, I mean, yeah, because it's Sunday, right? <laughs> I'm so excited. It's this week. It's it's so interesting. Um, I wasn't going to do Atlanta. I said, you know what? I ain't going to be at home. I'm, I'm about to step out. Um, I'm but it was put on my here. heart to start home because starting home made me realize all the resources I had. Sometimes you don't realize how many resources you had. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I'm happy I'm staying at home because people are teaching me stuff. like, please, you need to do this. You need to go out there. I was like, ooh, I'm at home. I make mistakes at home. It's fine. But when I go out by myself, it's a little <laughs> different. A little different. <laughs> I think we we got a question. We got a question. Look here. Okay. Hey, look here. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing amazing. Great, great, great. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. What advice will you tell our next generation? Number one, listen to your mama. Look, that sounds so like cliche. Um, but most importantly, I would say, ask your mom questions. Ask your parents questions. Um, I'm going to work it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ask questions. Um, I think they get really scared and they jump into social media. Number one, social media is their, not their friends because they're seeing too much. Um, but I feel like at the end of the day, they need to feel comfortable. And let's go back to mama. She needs to feel comfortable with talking to you about anything. My eight-year-old in there, he can come in here and break down herpes. He can come in and break down his, what, his genitals. He can break it down because I was like, I'm not going to wait until you're so curious that you jump. He started asking questions. I said, okay, that's time to have to talk. Ugh, it's uncomfortable. You ate. You know, but just imagine when you ate. Mm -hmm. that you, What you were seeing, what you were feeling, you know. And our parents didn't know because they we didn't tell them. We were scared to tell them. So if, when you see things or you see that she's interested in things, start talking to her. Hey, you know, what you think about this? You're talking to boys. You're liking boys. It's fine. I love you. I'm not going to 
kill you. I promise you. Um, Not be today. comfortable. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just, you know, most importantly for this youth now, since I'm kind of still there, they want to feel like they matter and they voice matter. So sometimes as parents, which I'm learning now, is to step back and let them talk. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's great advice. I And my granny, she used to always say that if you can't talk to me, then find some adult that we both trust and yes. respect and talk to that person. You know, so it's always sometimes, you know, it's just a little bit uncomfortable to talk to mama, but mama mm-hmm. might have a best friend that, you know, like the favorite auntie, you know, and talking to the favorite auntie is good just as long as. You know, I did that. Yeah, That's my, to I told my mom, auntie. best friend, well, close friend at the time I was praying. I said, okay, what's she going to say? She's like, she's going to flip. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, it helped me. So when I went to tell her, I already kind of knew what was going to happen. So most important, making sure she have people around or you have people around that she can trust and she builds a relationship with. Yeah. Any other questions? I knew you had a mic. question. <laughs> she needs a mic. I knew she had a question. Hey, I just want to say thank you. Um, I commend you for what you do. I pray God's blessings on you. Thank you. And um, how soon do you start having these conversations? Because, like, you know, I'm in the world of education, and, you know, our kids are out there having fun. So fun. how soon do you, you know, break open those conversations about dating and risks or, you know, not, you know, cor- courting? Courting. Say it right. Courting. Say it right. right. Um, so. I truly say it is – it's based off the child. We can't make everything a general. And Cookie when we cutter. make it general, and I know being an educator, you understand it. Some kids learn verbal. Some per- kids you hear once and they got it. So we have to just learn the child and then go based off that. Because some kids like, Mama, I ain't think about that. You know, yeah. it's not a concern. So you don't want to really not say not talk about it, but you don't want to push it either. If they're right. not in that place where it's important, still you would say, okay, when you're ready, and put that out. When you're ready to talk about it, let me know. Or go talk to your aunt. Or go talk to your grandma when, when you know you're ready. So it's all about the maturity level for the child. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. That's that's great information. And that's so key because we're not, we, we are all fluid. We Different people do different things at different different times. And that's the worst thing we do. We, we, we all fight in the education system now that yeah. try to put all the kids in the same thing and pull them all out at the same time and, you know, miss so many valuable points of educating, you know. And, and we just kind of get caught up with this whole Oh, it's a it's a it's a tightrope, but you know that's why we have platforms like this, and mm-hmm. we have um, we have literally at our disposal now. We're more advanced with the information that you can seek out here. The thing is now is trying to get past the noise of the media. Yeah. You know, because there's a lot of information, but then you have to be willing to get down there deep and talk to the people that you need to talk to and i think that's where the the um the groups come in to play you know because yeah. now you can hear multiple voices and you know that it's it's in a safer environment than if you just go and start winging it on your own trying to figure it out you know so this is somebody definitely because she has a lot of information your tour starts on the 22nd and the 23rd here in um atlanta then you'll be going to north carolina april Dorm. the Yes, April the 26th and 27th, over to Alabama, May the 17th, and then back around to New Orleans. What, Mardi Gras, man? <laughs> she, she's so excited. silly. Baltimore in July, uh, Tampa, Florida in August, and then Houston, Texas in October. I am so proud of you. I want to invite you on to the Wake Up Winning Call oh, yeah. just so you can come on there and help spread the word more. They can go on Eventbrite and get the tickets to come to the yes, tour. They don't want to miss it they it's do not so want to miss good. it because on friday you get a one-on-one that's yeah. not too many times that you can really yeah sit she's down. giving up let, let me just say this <laughs> she's giving up a lot of value and, and for this information you know so definitely let me just give a quick shout out to some people that are yes. watching us on facebook where are my glasses? Hey, Facebook. Y'all know I had to get this right now. Um, Demisha White, hello, 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 love. Keisha Cooley, uh, Felicia Gardner is hey. watching. Pat is watching. Chili's watching. Um, Dawn is now she's watching. Brenda's watching. Hey. Sharon Johnson's watching. Crystal's watching. Uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Please give a keep giving us some hearts, love, and like. 
Uh, we really, really need that. We're going to take a quick, short break. And when we come back, I'm going to bring up this panel of amazing yeah. ladies. We're going to chop it up real quick. We are having a great time. Is everybody having a great time? Woo! Okay, then. <laughs> so this is the... Um, this is the love show. What I say all the time is until we figure out how to love ourselves completely from past mistakes, from, you know, bad decisions, from forgiveness is I tell y'all, if y'all don't set that forgiveness on fire, then it, it's a it's a blockage of mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. When I say everything, everything. it's it starts with that forgiveness. So I just wanna um want to tell y'all that we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come right back because we got lots of information to give you. So we'll see you right back. Love this. See, this is what I do. I pause these words to serenade you. Do I have your attention? It may take some time, so don't try to find it in this rhyme. My place is not for a petite bath. Here to soak, soak, soak down deep in your mind. And like a sponge, my desire is to soak up all your thoughts. Play with Cupid's arrow until you get caught behind the sharp spear that whispers in your ear. From old school to new school, ballads and iTunes, keep up with the snapping new jack. Yeah, you deserve a big pat on the back. Or should I sit in your lap, dancing? I'll be your private dancer. No money's needed. I'll do it for fun. Sex in the city or in the ride. Pull up in the driveway. Happy days. Baby, they're here to stay. Tickets to the show. Mystery, sci-fi, or drama. Bring on the comedy. Did I just wet my pants or was that a dream? Expand on them in detention. Fifteen rounds in the ring. Heavyweight champion. My heart is capable of more. And when you think of me, I want you to believe that our paths were destined to cross. You will fall to the floor, knocked out. Because the joy in my heart was once lost. The writings on the wall was all that surgery necessary. To get into my space, Facebook, or on my channel. I'm trying to create something new, different, and great. But just like playing chess, be careful of the next move you make. Return to planets of the eight, perhaps a kiss, maybe a hug. But one thing's for sure, I'll be there to show you love. I'll be there to show you love. Did I sleep too sound 
or did you float into my window when I was listening to my Kindle and hearing my inspirational sounds? I thought my vision board and my daily declarations and my positive self-talk had you blocked. Again, I asked, how did you make it into my playhouse? I counted on my like-minded friends, accountability coaches, and my righteous spiritual leaders to keep you out. And lastly, I depended on mentors and role models and, of course, my dream-making buddies to fill my plate. But somehow, you still managed to bounce into my playhouse. You took a seat as if you were invited. Oh no, I think not. I think it's time for you to go. And make sure you take all your friends, poverty, sickness, bitterness, and confusion. And don't forget lazy conformity and the oldest self-doubter. And did I mention procrastinator, people pleaser, and non-believer? Get them up out of here right now. It's time for them to go. And this time, I'm using security. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So don't even think about returning to my playhouse. Turning to my playhouse. Hey, okay, so that was kind of weird because I'm not used to holding this mic in my hand. And I had the mic down just down here on the book trying to go talk, but now I see where I needed to pick it up. So, anyway, it's me. Yes, it's me. The motivational queen. I'm back with my lovely, lovely, lovely co um co look, all of these are authors and their hosts. These are our women of business. Um, this is the panel here. We're missing one. Peace, blessing, love, and light out to Miss Tiasha. She was a little under the weather tonight. So um, y'all send Tiasha a kiss right quick. <laughs> All right. So she got that. So um, I'm so I'm so glad to see y'all. Y'all looking good. So you too. They, they, they acting a little shy. That's all right. They're gonna have to get it together. <laughs> you know, I, I had I had to put this panel together because in business women need a support system and Belize was talking about it. Um Dawn was talking about how we as women, you know, we have to know who to go to, who's holding us up, who's lifting us up. So I just want everybody real quick to understand of why we're doing what we're doing is because all of these ladies that you see before you, they all have a lot of stuff going on. And they, they're making a big impact, and it's up to all of us to celebrate them in their impact that they're making. And I'm honored to be able to... Um, help raise the vibration and help lift everybody up. So starting here on the end with all this fabulous going on, y'all don't see her. I want you to move that book out the way because they don't, they missing out on these pearls <laughs> through the camera. There. No, put it, oh, put oh, it oh, this way. Yeah, bring okay. it that way. We want to see the book now. Don't, okay. don't get it twisted. We want to see the book. But y'all see that diva down there? She got all these <laughs> pearls, these fancy glasses going on. This is her on a, on a bad day, okay? Just wait because this is a better day and she going to knock y'all socks off <laughs> come on ladybug introduce yourself okay <laughs> well thank you um queen wanda for allowing me to share the platform with you on this evening i am charlie saharian uh coach third degree survivor coach and i am an author um as well as of two books um, this one here is called I Sur Survived, and the second one is Just Believe That Faith Shifts Everything. Mm -hmm. And I also have a business called Blue Essence Consulting Firm, where we do some consulting uh, work in the criminal justice field uh, to help those uh, who are incarcerated to be reintegrated back into society, as well as coaching, and I said survivor coaching, for those who have gone through women who have gone through traumatic events or pitfalls in life, as well as for those who are um, survivors of cancer. And um, 
Then thirdly, I actually do a little bit of counseling, that's group counseling for those women who are in need um, to try to get back and find the real self again. Awesome. Listen here, um, give us real quick your website because I don't want to miss that. Give us right, right quick. Okay, you can actually meet, um, um, see me at www.charlisa, C-H-A-R-L-I-S-A, Harriet, H-E-R-R-I-O-T-T, a survivor's voice.com. Okay, y'all got that. So, Miss Charlisa, what, what are you doing for, are you celebrating Black History Month? I am. Okay, so I want to know what's your... What's your um what's your favorite person or your favorite moment in black history that you can relate to? I want you to think about that. I'm gonna come back to you. Okay. So in the meantime, going here to Miss Farley, introduce yourself. Good evening and thank you again for having all of us back. Um I am Lakel Farley. I am a motivational speaker, an author, a mother of seven. Um, I am the co-owner of Lakel Life Interventions. And I'm the author of I'm Grown, Now What? The book is for um, young adults ages 18 to 25 to get their first introductory steps into adulthood and financial literacy. Um, I also coach um, young adults as well. I wrote a second book called Dysfunctional Mindsets. I, um, in that book, it discusses young adults having separation anxiety from their parents um, wow. going into the real world and how they can cope with the different um, emotions that they're going through and how they can get on a cord to be able to separate from mom telling you everything to when you're entering into the real world. Okay. What do you mean? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna kill me. Okay, not today. I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna get thrown out today. Um the same the same question that I asked <laughs> Charlisa, I just want you to think about that because I'm going to come back around and ask that. And over here on my, is this my left or my right? <laughs> okay, my left. All right. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without y'all. You're keeping me on the track. Okay, pretty lady. Oh, okay. Is you introducing yourself? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm your co host. Yes, she always is. Kiana Faye Webster, Empowerment for the Powerless. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Love Yana Outreach, a nonprofit organization that provides supportive services to individuals and families affected by domestic violence and or sexual abuse. Awesome. So tell us how to get in touch with you, website. My website is www.loveyuna.org. -E okay, great. So the same thing, I'm going to come back around and ask you that question. Pretty lady. Hello, Miss Motivational Queen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me on the show again, and welcome back, ladies. My name is India White. I am a motivational speaker, entrepreneur, educator, and an author. I'm so grateful and blessed uh, this year to actually have been a part of certain publications and also uh, with my own works combined, it's been over 20 works. So I give God the glory for that. And um, my biggest tool this year and my biggest vision is to empower those that are overcoming various obstacles. I was blessed to write a book on overcoming obstacles from your past and to thrive to the next level. Um, and what I found as writing that particular series of books is that there are a lot of hurting youth and a lot of hurting women that need answers and they need answers today because they feel stuck and they need to know that they can overcome anything. And so I am grateful that I'm able to be a voice in the community to help serve them and help them to overcome obstacles. And I'm also focusing this year on entrepreneurship and I've got a great event coming in June and I'll let you guys know more about it. So, um, you know, keep in touch because I think that you guys will be really, really excited. <laughs> awesome. 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 You know what? I'd be cracking up because y'all don't even understand the, the, the situations that be going on around here. We got people acting up over there, people acting up over there, people acting up over there. So, you know, it's just, it's all good. I just want to acknowledge some of our Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I want to acknowledge some of our Facebook viewers, and I'm not able to log into uh, to Instagram right now to see what's going on with them, but 
Let's see. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Marty Williams, that's my auntie. Hey, auntie. Mm -hmm. Zanita, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you, Felicia, for tuning in. And for everybody else, I want you to do me a favor on Facebook. Put down where you're tuning in from, you know, and, and any, if you have any questions for anybody, then please just put those down. That um, so if you want to ask anybody any questions, and I know you probably like most people, you know, they hear certain things and then they don't hear certain things. So I just want you to know this: that the lady right here, I'm, a, I'm you, you got you in a hot seat right now, okay? Okay. okay so I'm if you in this seat. she gonna stop getting in that seat, she she if you over there, you still be in a seat. Oh, no. <laughs> so. For, for anybody that's, um, she will help you. And we have a lot of people that's thinking about going into business that don't know how to get started, that don't know where to find the money's at. This is who you want to contact. She also, now leave up that foreclosure fly, flyer for a moment. You know, um, she also does so much work in the community helping people stay in their homes, helping them find resources for if they have to move abruptly, you know, because this is where it was a, a house in my neighborhood that just recently somebody's stuff was, you know, out on the lawn. And I was like, man, I think that if they had of let us know what was going on, that we all probably could have pitched in and helped out because, you know, that's, that's tough when you come home and all your stuff is spread it out for public display. Mm -hmm. And I and and I think I don't know, Lakeel. Help me out. Do they have to just sit people stuff out? Couldn't they just padlock the house up? And well, I think some laws need to be changed. I, don't I agree. Know. I agree. The laws need to be changed, and we're the one that make the difference in those uh, making those fresh laws. But um, unfortunately, that's how it works. That's how it um, is once, now. Once your home is foreclosed, the new management company will come in and pursue going to court with you to have you evicted out your own home. And then upon you going to court, the court is only going to give you a couple of days. Um, you have some other avenues you can go um, to get legal advice in regards to how you can stay in your home a little bit longer. But inevitably, you will be um, forced to leave. Yeah. So that, and, and you talk, you hit something on the nail, on a hit, what is that, a the nail, the nail on the head. 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 The nail on the head. Okay, say it again. The nail on the head. Okay, the nail on the head <laughs> was when we have to make changes. Mm -hmm. So how do we as a community, how do we make those changes to change the laws from people's stuff just getting dumped out? Because it should, to me, it should be some type of like maybe like a 72-hour, like a three-day act imposed after the time frame of this you have to leave because i know people can leave court and say you got to go home and get out of there like well normally right the now. courts will give you about seven to seven ten days it just depends on the judge on how he's feeling that day um like i said if you really want to get a little bit more time you need to hire an attorney and push it up into state court and take it out of magistrate court ah, for them to be able to stay a little bit the longer delay. yes so, the delay. but we're also going to talk about this same issue on mm -hmm. march the i was going to say right on march the 30th um, and it's going to be an event that's going to be held at the IE, I mean the AIE um, Center um, this on a on a Saturday. It's going to be from two to five p.m. We're going to go over all the information about um, foreclosure Tuesday that is in, locally in Georgia every mm -hmm. month where people lose their homes. Um, we are going to talk about um, how to save your homes. We're going to talk about um, the steps you can you can take before that final moment um, because you can fight back with your mortgage company. Um, of course, if you have not been paying mortgages for the uh, past few months, you should have some type of money saved. Um, if you don't, there are a lot of um, help in the community as well where different churches will assist you with trying to catch up on certain um, mortgage and bills. Mm -hmm. And you just recently had a, um, a seminar um, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I did. How did that go? Um, we did. It was wonderful. We had a, a very nice turnout. That was Super Bowl weekend. You was in competition yes. with. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. It was. It was very, very huge. Um, it was a lot of people that came out wanted to know a lot of information about it, um, and we actually uh, saved five people home that weekend. Okay. So I'm very excited That's about so that. Sad. That they get to ch to stay in their home, and yeah. um, hopefully they will. Uh, get into a modification 
that will keep them further in their home because again right. when we stop their homes the mortgage company can come back in a couple you know a couple of weeks later and say well we didn't agree to the terms and what you're right. trying to do um and like i said a lot of times when you bump it up and go into a different arena which means you hire attorneys and you go into court mm -hmm. a lot of times that'll give you the the necessary steps to be able to fight your mortgage company like a lot of people don't realize that you can do a restraining order a tpo against your your um, mortgage companies did y'all so, know that uh, yes so again come out um march the 30th 2019 the flyer is up with all the details and information um you can reach Kipling Real Estate, and we'll be more than happy to assist you with any questions you might have. Well, LaKel, I really appreciate that and what you're doing. Had you um, given any thought to who's your iconic black history female or just person in general? Um, the person I like is Cicely Tyson. Cicely Tyson. Mm -hmm. She is amazing. Yes. She's amazing. What was your first experience with Cicely um, I watched her on several movies, but I like the fact that she, what she tries to do for the community and what she tries to give back to people and motivate them to do different things um, with her actions. Um, even now that you that you look at her and she's getting a lot older, she's always trying she's so to motivate. Beautiful. Yes. She always. She's so beautiful. Yes, always. So beautiful. Yeah, and that's that's key because Cicely grew up in that area of like civil rights. So mm -hmm. most of those people from that era, they have like really really hard core spirit mm -hmm. for justice and yes. for just getting you know because during that time even in the industry of uh, uh, entertainment it wasn't so much to be an entertainer it was more or less so that platform could be educating people about you know what was going on so she's one that stands out to me and in that same arena I think of, um, who was the couple D uh, Ruby D and mm -hmm. her husband mm -hmm. like they all were like right there in that era Right? Mm -hmm. I see you shaking your head, so you want to say something. Oh, no, I'm agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I got a question for you then. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, Miss Charlisa, who's, who's up? I would say Viola Davis. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason for one, she's from my um, home state, which is South Carolina. Okay. And then secondly, um, I think that she's the... Uh, epitome of where you can overcome obstacles. Mm -hmm. I mean, when she was trying to get into the entertainment field, there were many obstacles that came along her way, but she didn't allow that to hinder what her vision was and, and what she Viola. believed in. And she still stands for that today. And then she also gives back to encourage others mm -hmm. at, that, you know, that she's opened up the door and she's allowing others, you know, reaching back to bring them forward too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what you do. That's yes. what I do. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it's something how we're going to admire, we probably, uh, our heart will probably go out to the people that we really resonate with the most and what we do. Miss right. India, <laughs> who's so, next? Miss um, Daisy Bates is next. Um, Daisy Bates is a civil rights activist um, back in the civil rights, during the civil rights movement. And she was the lady that was responsible for ushering the nine children through on um, to the integrated campus for the first time in Arkansas. She was the president of the NAACP chapter down in Arkansas. And the reason why I love her story is because if she never marched for integration, we would still have segregated schools. We would not be able to go to, you know, universities of our choice. You know, I mean, this opened up everything. Like even us, you know, being here, starting a business, you having a show, like all of these are opportunities that have been given to us because we had wonderful powerhouse women like Daisy Bates, who actually went through and made it happen. I mean, this lady had so many people coming after her, so much opposition, like she had like, you know, different, you know, groups that were kind of anti what she was about, you know, show up at her doorstep many times, mm -hmm. you know, threatening her life. She received bullets, um, bullet cases in the mail, like so many different things that, you know, we don't even think about. It's 2019. My children just go to school. They don't even think about it. You know, I go to school like we all just get up every day. Our children go to school. Our children go to college. You know, we enroll in classes online. All of this has been given to us as an opportunity because she was the first one that said, 
um, segregation needs to stop in the schoolhouse and we need to allow these kids to go through and we need opportunity for all people. So my heart goes out to her. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that is, um, you know, talk about the trailblazers. You know, yes. we are definitely, we, we come we come so far, but yet we're still, there's so much ahead of us, you know, to go, you know, but definitely those people that open the doors are, you know, it's where it is. Why are you looking off? <laughs> you know you up. I mean, I'm, I didn't gave you enough time. <laughs> Look, I didn't gave him two weeks to think about it, but. <laughs> that was told in a secret. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, she that's good. true. And you know what? I've I seen, I seen, uh, I seen something very interesting, and I posted it. I don't know who you know paid it attention or not, and I can't really recall it right now. I wish I had of um, prepared for that, but. You know, there was a lot of backlash about Rosa Parks, and then, you know, it kind of got watered down and stuff. But I didn't know until I really did a lot of research on her that her dad was always into digestive justice and, you know, yes. and he really was like a powerhouse. Yeah, yeah. And he was yes. like, you knew not to mess with any of his children. Mm -hmm. And um, when people say, well, she just kind of like fell on the train up under Dr. Martin Luther King that was so not true because her father really implanted her um, with the whole standing up for people's rights and protecting everybody Do what what's wrong oh okay how about if I do it like that? <laughs> Look, Ned is on me. Y'all know Ned is a hard pill to, you know, she's a, she be cracking that whip. Ned, I'm trying to do better. You got me on this cordless mic. You know, I don't normally be, okay, all right. So anyway, um, <laughs> she says she ain't having it. So that's a, that's a beautiful person to, you know, to, to yes. be considered, you know, yes. and there's so many people. Do you, I, I'm going I'm to throw this question out. I'm going to let my brain pick a person because I'm not going to ask it to everybody. <laughs> <clears throat> but, um, and first let me go to Facebook. <laughs> Get y'all time to take a deep breath here. So, uh, so, so you line is watching. She says she's watching from South Car from Charleston, South Carolina. Thank you so much. Um, Miss Williams says very interesting. Keep up the good work. Uh, Tariq Taylor is watching from Michigan. Uh, yeah, so th that's all I see new, but we, we going right along. And guys, please like and advice. Share some, share this information to somebody and tell them to tune in. So my question is this, and I'm going to direct this to, I'm going to direct this to this lady beside me with the black shirt on. Um, why do, because we, we all can agree okay. that here in the United States, they're still doing crazy, chaotic, stupid stuff that you would think 2019 we shouldn't be there, but we're still here. You know, we just had this whole thing about Gucci and then um, TJ Maxx had did something else. They created a shirt with a noose on it. And to me, these are just like the distractions of what we should be focused on, you know. And, and it's kind of like the banana in the tailpipe. This is not a political show, but... We're in, and this is, we're all affected by all of this. So I don't like to get caught up in the politics so much on the show, but it's kind of hard to get away from them all the time because we're definitely living in this era. And this isn't politics. This is just the perception and the mindset of people. So, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably the Ms. wrong Webster. one to ask what you about Ms. Ask, No, 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 Miss Webster. I can, I can ask you, and if you can, you know yeah. what? We'll play a game. If you don't want to answer, then you could pick somebody, and they have to answer it. Ooh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Does that sound like a good game? Oh, good no. game. <laughs> Let's do it. I like it. I like it. So you know, because you're called on first, but if you don't want to answer, then you can hand it off, and y'all have like y'all got to jump on it with okay. the answer. Mm. So I want to know. Um, I already know who I'm gonna pick too. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think there's so much hatred towards black people? Charlie's. Wow. Why is there so much hatred towards? I think because of our history of us knowing that we have gone through so much as a people and then still yet we can come together and stand in unity 
make our voices known, um, gravitate together, put our minds together, and go for whatever it is that we have set our minds at. Correct. Whatever vision there is, we go after it. Regardless of who tells us that we can't do it, if you tell us that we can't, we're going to show you that we can. Yes. So it's the yes. resilience. Correct. It's, it's the right. resilience. Um, let me let me let somebody else want to take that question as well. India. India. <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to pull from a text in the Bible that makes me think about the children of Israel and how when they were in bondage with Pharaoh and how it said they are multiplying themselves and they're great and there's nothing that they'll be able to do, you know, like they keep growing and no matter how much bondage we put on them, they keep thriving, they keep becoming great and there's nothing we can do about it. We have to take them out. And I feel like it's that same type of spirit. I think this is a spiritual thing. I think that within the black race, there's so much excellence. I think within the black race, there are so many just great people that are anointed and gifted to do phenomenal things. I'm yes. talking some of the greatest things, even your traffic light that we see every day was invented by a black person. Like these are things that, you know, if it wasn't for God's blessing on our people, our world would be completely void. You know, when you look at music, some of the best music comes from our race. Like so many great strengths comes from our race. And I think that, Unfortunately, some people, they realize that and they come to grips with that. And instead of accepting that and embracing that and working with it, they try to shut it down, diffuse it or get rid of it, like however way they can. And I think that's because, one, they're not in that race or two, because they feel like they've got something to prove or they've got something to um, to just fulfill with their hatred. And I, I think the saddest part, though is that even in 2019, we still have to have this conversation. Yeah. Yes. You know? But it, yes. It's, it's necessary. Like I say, you know, we don't, we can't run from issues that kind of slap us up in the face because these are some of the things, you know, like we talked about earlier, you know, you just got to get truthful with everything that's going on around you because it doesn't go away. And um, you both said something very key. I think that there's many answers to that question mm -hmm. you know one thing i think about is the fact that um we're threat because let's face it if we really knew how to come together socially we could really do some powerful things right. together but we really don't know how to do that because we're still being guided and manipulated through all these outside experiences and this is goes back to self when you practice in self love and then if I see you then I'm seeing myself instead of I'm looking at you and I'm seeing something else that I dislike about myself you know and and this is key because when we look at each other as a community we can rise above right. the so-called hatred and the so-called right. attack That's but right. we don't have we, we haven't yet figured out how to combine our resources to grow in these areas that will put us in a much better situation because um, we're too busy trying to fit in. And, and and we can't fit Say in. We we Say too powerful to fit in. Right. Say it again. Come on now. That's Come on now. Right. Right. We, we, we too powerful to fit in. You know. Right. And once we realize that we don't have to fit in, like once we realize that we can educate our own children. See, because the history that's not being taught is where your child thinks that they come here and they're in the computer. They they were born in the computer age and they think that that's all it is. And then they go to the computer for references. But when you can take your kids on 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 excursions and and you can take them around you know the the um the town and show them this is the house that Dr. Martin Luther King grew up That's in powerful. and and this is this place and this is this place here in Atlanta we are in a very rich environment because this was the birth of so many changes that we still haven't yet figured out that those changes were to elevate us, you know, with some of us are still sitting in the back of the bus, even though they say, you know, we can sit, move to the front of the bus. Well, you know, I don't want to get into this so deep. So <laughs> let me just move on to, to my next question. Wow. So what, and I'm going to ask this to 
You can't give your question back. That's another thing. If you ask the question <laughs> more than once, and you can't, you can't pass it back. Okay. Now, somebody else could give you the question, but you can't give it to nobody else. Okay. Okay, but I'm not going to give you this question. Okay. Okay, but I might. I don't know yet. <laughs> so I want to know, um, what has your attention in the media right now in reference to, to um, black history? And not just black history, maybe in terms of um, our whole makeup as women in business. What has your attention in the media right now? Think about that. Okay. So I want to know from LaKel, what has your attention in the media right now? Um, it, it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with us, but what has, what has my attention in media right now is the issues that we're dealing with about the wall, that we are constantly keep going round and round in a circle about that Trump is putting our livelihoods in danger. Um, we just came off a recent shutdown, and I want to say this. A lot of people think that when these persons went back to work, that they got all their funds back. At this point, some of them have not, and they're now suffering big time. And when I say big time, they're still in the process of losing different things. They're still in the process of wanting different things that they need just to survive. It was not what he put on media to say, oh, once they go back to work, everything will be good. But again, we took resources that could have been convert it to someone else or somewhere else and we're spending it on a wall now do I believe that we do need some type of security yes we do but is that appropriate to have a wall of for 200 and what is it 43 miles long when we can do something else with that money I totally disagree with that so right now I feel that the, the media is really hyping up on that but what I'm really concerned with is let's talk about what they're not talking about what's behind all of that what's behind that well I personally believe that again he's covering up the fact that we're going to go through a recession basically it is inevitable by the end of the year we will be stepping into another recession mm -hmm. unfortunately there's nothing that we're going to be able to do about it and he's setting us up, but he's using all these hidden tactics and antics and to keep us off but balance. in the tailpipe. Yeah, is to keep Get us off balance. Get you distracted. Get you to looking mm -hmm. over there when they're doing something over there. One thing is, is real clear is that his family is financially Correct. wealthy gener beyond generations Correct. because he's in there making some deals that if they kick them out tomorrow, they're going to be all right. Correct. You know, they they came in all right. They're going to continue. I mean, they came up being in the white house. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the, when the, when the whole thing hits the fan, you're going to see how major, major, major deals was made. And, and that brings me to the next point, which really, really flows into your answer. And that one is what steps do, do you think that we should take? immediately to become self-sufficient and um, economically competitive in our groups right here in America. Now, the reason why this was stood out so much to me is for something that you just said, we're about to hit a recession. Well, we're always either coming out of one or going into one. That That's just the cycle of how money works. Mm -hmm. You're either coming up or you're going down. And then you're in real estate, so you know, you know, like people get scared when they start coming down, but it's going to come down and then it's going to go back up. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how to make changes wherever we are in that pattern that goes like a, like a roller coaster ride. Right. But... I think, and this is just me, I think that we really need to pay attention to economics. I think we really need to, and I'm, and I'm talking about from the, from the perspective of where are you putting your money? Right. Who are you supporting? What, how are you taking your money and growing your money? You know, because no matter what, even in a, even in a recession, people get rich in recessions. People make money in recessions. A recession um, is only when, I'd say, affected the most is when you have all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to figure out how to diversify. Anybody like to chime in on that? Anybody? And, and also audience, too. If you got the mic and if you want to um, come, come back with that. 
Okay, Miss Miss Lady, you have any um, thing to say about that? Because I know for you, you're in the process of keep God first. Keep God first. Keep God well, first. well, you know what? That's that's a given. Let's just say that that's a given. What else do we have to do? Because even if God is first, it's a charge on our life to do. Stay focused. Right. Stay focused on what? What it is that you have to do in life, your goals and your, your dreams. I mean, you're gonna have to put God first. We can't control who's in the White House. Yeah, that's true. I'm, but I'm talking about from an angle of economics. What? Where do you see? Or does anybody see where we really need to to step up more? All right. I would truly say you have to have multiple sources of income. Yes. Um, we know that as entrepreneurs, but even the people around us. Do you work your job and you love what you do? Because we know many friends who are just good at it. And we can't just expect everybody to jump off the all the job for us. Then nobody be working and we need everybody to go somewhere. Right. Um, but it's just truly um, using your skills and bringing another so, you know, another source of income with your skills. If you're a doctor, you can go out and you know be a consultant or you can sell some products or something like that. So I Expansion. think everybody needs to understand that you just have to have something other than one. Because like you said, we're going to, it's coming. And it's coming real, real fast. Yes. Um, and a lot of people are going to be blindsided. But I feel like like she was saying, it's that hidden thing, it was a test. It's like, are y'all ready? Are y'all, y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. And y'all gonna see how ready you're not. Um, so I would tell anybody, just make sure you create another source, source after a source. Um, right. And c- constantly making sure your home is taken care of. Right. Um, anybody else want to add anything over here? We have a, a studio audience that want to chime in on that. I would like to say, don't live by your means. I mean, I know she just said and done. And I wanted to ask, um, I don't know who to in a second okay so what I was going to say is not to live beyond your means so we didn't Um, hear you I know that's easier said than done but I mean not keeping up with the Joneses I know that's a cliche Um, me personally you know I've been through a lot of financial rebuilding but right now I have a Honda it has 300 and over 300,000 miles on it but I do not have a car note and I'm going Absolutely. to ride it Amen. at least right. yeah, until the wheels yes. literally fall out. But it took me a while to get to that space now. But hopefully I can ride it another 200,000 more miles and then eventually I will. And those are some good cars. Yes. They were built to be turned over several times. You say you have a question for Ms. LaKale. Go ahead and ask your yes. question. So my background is education. I've worked in high schools before. And I know earlier in your introduction it said something that you work with high school students or with financial literacy. So, um, what are your thoughts or on, I guess, I guess financial literacy being part of a graduation requirement or, or mandatory mm-hmm. elective in the schools? Because that's where we're missing. Because a lot of the mistakes I made, I didn't learn until I, I, I had to learn the hard way. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. When I tell you I am very excited about that, I'm very excited about it. My reason for being excited is because, again, I just experienced this a couple of years ago with my son. Um, he came out of school, and one of the things is like, okay, my graduated, what's next? And a lot of the things we thought that they should be teaching in school, they no longer teach. They don't teach us like um, they used to teach us back in the day, home economics and stuff like that. They don't even go into that anymore. So when he came out, it was like, okay, son, you know, he knew about his bank account and everything because I've taught that for a while. But then how to fill out an application, how to um, create a resume, which they are teaching that now in school, mm-hmm. but they're limited. Um, uh, how do you fill out, um, get an apartment? How do you... Um, the simplest thing is how you read your paycheck. Uh, even adults older age don't know how and understand how to read their paychecks. And I found that amazing. I can calculate down to the penny my check, my husband check, my son check, anybody check that's in front of me. I'm going to calculate down to make sure they're not cheating you. They need to understand it, how to deal with taxes and stuff like that. So I'm elated that they are getting ready to put this in the school system. Um, I also am in the process of also trying to get the inside to the jail system too because a lot of the youth that are in the system is not being educated on like they they do young adults or uh, the older adults how to go back into society Mm -hmm. where they're they're caught up 
and they, they don't have a transition mm -hmm. of how can we get back into everyday life like right. what's it what is it like for them once they go into the system and the system say oh uh, classify you as a bad child so i'm elated that they are putting it back in the system and a lot of times um Speaking of prisoners, they are uh, what we call repeat offenders. Because Correct. They want to go back to jail because they don't know how to live. Correct. They don't know how to cope. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's wow. great. Any That's other great. questions from the audience? No, not right now. Yes. Make sure that mic is on. Okay. My name is Bianca. I want to just piggyback on what we she You got to talk in the mic. My name is Bianca. I just want to piggyback on what she just said about wanting to get into the um the prisons or the, the jails or whatever to teach this course, I'm a convicted fe uh, ex-felon, <laughs> I want to say, but um, in federal prison, they are now, it's required that you take the class. Um, that's uh, part of one of your exit classes that mm -hmm. you have to take. Mm -hmm. So as far as state prison, state prison don't have it. Correct. Right? So they need Correct. it. Correct. Absolutely. And you know what, you, you're touching on a lot of stuff because Schools are not created for entrepreneurship, Correct. first of all. Schools are created for employees. Right. They don't, they're not trying to educate us so we can be self-sufficient. And they start at an early age. They even start in middle school. Um, my daughter is been taking all kind of tests to determine what she's more likely to like when she get in high school. So they start molding them yeah. at the 10, they 11, 12 years old. Yes. And they're basically teaching them how to work for someone else. And I yes. and the conversation cars like, no, you're yes. not. You're, it's okay to work for someone else. But what about your own ambitions and dream? What about if what you want to do later in life? I'm not saying that you ha you can't work for yourself, but I'm saying if you want to work for someone work for yourself too so that way again you have different streams of incomes and that's important I can tell you something else that's essential for when we get ready to go in this recession your credit please make sure you are correcting your credit now because believe me when we go through this recessions all these wonderful houses that are listed for two and three hundred thousand dollars when um, they go through the recession they will fall down in price again and you'll be able to get them for dirt cheap but guess what if you do not take the moments now to correct your credit, your credit you, won't, you won't be able to get them so this is the time for you to take the time and again get your credit straight Exactly. I love it. I love it. Um, because, you know, I think, and, and this is where I am, am at with, um, with history and then with our current state. Remember back in the day where your, you saw more businesses thriving in our black communities, mm -hmm. and now you don't see that. Now you see where businesses are thriving, but they're not our businesses. Black, the black dollar we overspend on everything. We don't question spending. We spend, 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 spend. And we don't spend, our money doesn't stay in our community. You know, so right. these are some things that um, if we're paying attention to how they're educating our children now, and you really, I, I, and I say this all the time, you know, you don't have to send your kid to school. You don't have to send them to any school, public or private. You have enough resources where you can educate them and you can create them into becoming entrepreneurs, creative thinkers right now. I think back in history where how we would go to school like in, in, in Africa, we would go to school to study that, what our gift was. And now we're not doing that. They're sending our kids to school to just learn information, not to study what your gift is. So if I'm gifted at speaking, I should be going to school to learn how to become a better speaker, not to go to school to learn how to work on cars because I'm not really interested, but they want to put me in shop class because, quote, you need a elective and it has to be in that particular area. And it doesn't make any sense. So this is where I say as parents, you know, and I pray for parents every day. I'm not a, I'm not on that front line like I used to be, but I pray for parents to take a real hardcore look 
at what their child is learning and spend time because this is definitely a new era. Kids are absorbing so much information. They're processing it really quickly. These aren't the kids that you would just say, hey, go over there and do that. Our kids are geniuses yes, and we are. don't yes. tap into that they spirit are. of them. Yes, they you know, are. They, they're creating programs and their mind is going and they can take any type of electronic device and turn yes. it inside out. And these are the things that we really, really, really need to be paying attention to, not trying to make them be a good student. You really should try to figure out what your kids are thriving at. We have a church in here. You want to say amen or something? <laughs> <laughs> You know, so we, we spend a lot of time with trying to follow a system that's broken, mm -hmm. right. yes. you know, and I think that we really need to just try to create a new system and we can do that, but we have to do it in small settings like this and then we have to go get to work. So, you know, um, what's next? Well, I'm glad that you stated that, Wanda, because even I have a 15 year old niece that's been living with me for the last three years. And she's a straight A student. She's here in the audience now, ever since first grade. And she's in the um, ninth grade now. She's in the STEM program. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there isn't anything that she can't just pick up and just gravitate to and learn. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, it's like students like her, we need to continue to encourage them. I try to get her involved within the program. So therefore preparing her for college and even encouraging her to say that you can, I've always told her ever since she was small, to say that you can be the first African American president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And I keep telling her that. If she wants that if job. If she desires that. And then that way we we'll just back her up <laughs> and she can go for it. She can do anything. You know, anything. That, that's the beautiful part about this life that we live is we can actually do anything. You know, um, we can. We, we, we prove, I mean, it's proven that we've done anything. You know, so it's like, what's next? How do we solve some of these problems when you see that they're trying to sway us in the one direction that we really don't need to be going? Mm -hmm. I, I think about when Trump was um, hired in for that job and promising people that he was going to see this this would never made sense how could he possibly tell you that mexico is going to pay for something he doesn't run mexico like Correct. like he had all of them following like yes we're going to take it back because he's going to make mexico pay and they were he was like look at them they're they're really believing it look at them look at them <laughs> and, and, then, and then the mexican president he was like y'all really thought he was that that was gonna happen i mean like really <laughs> i think it was a oh the ex-president he was talking and i i was cracking up i like was fell on the floor he was like y'all really thought he was gonna come over here and tell us what to do yeah okay <laughs> so now he said that he gonna make y'all pay for it mm -hmm. yeah that's what he said that was that was the whole thing. So um, let's let's come around the table right quick. I know we got some things going on, and I say this to um, to anybody watching. See, these are some issues that we have to address it and we have to talk about it because if we don't talk about it, it's not going away. We have to be sure that we're focused on the right thing. Everybody up here has their own project and their own uh, passion of what makes them you know strong in their in their field but together collectively we can win in all these areas but we have to be very very mindful of what we're doing and where we're putting our focus at um you had said something you know really come over here get a little closer you <laughs> You had, said, you had said, you know, something very, very key, and that is keeping God first and then um, focusing on, you know, the things that matter. So if, we, if we're focusing on 99 different things and none of it adds up to a hill of beans, then we're going to see ourselves stuck, you know, in that same poo-poo, you know. And who wants to be stuck in the poo-poo? Nobody. Nobody. So you have an event coming up on the 21st. Want to talk about that? Yes. Um... It's a black history program. I am one of the sponsors for uh, it's at a daycare in Decatur. Yes. Daycare in Decatur. So y'all in the deck? Yes. 
<laughs> when they say Decatur, Decatur where is greater. Decatur where is greater. <laughs> That's what we'll be Thursday. Uh, what's this, February? Yes. first and y'all can bring <laughs> y'all children out bring it's a community kids. event so bring your kids out we're going now what can they expect when they come in what, what are we going to be learning or well, doing we're going to be talking about black history and just um letting the kids really present what it is that they you know want so the kids are doing presentations and um, okay you know, we're just the sponsors are getting together to help you know make that event happen for the school that's beautiful we have to support our kids um do you have you have another event coming up too um, is yes, it is the book signing and conference in, it's in Orlando. Okay, when is that? It is March 8th through 10th. March 8th through 10th. Did you send me the flyer to that? No? I did. Did. Okay, don't worry. Y'all gonna keep getting this information because you know how we do. I, I'm always posting <laughs> things out life. so y'all can get everything that you need. And then we have your event that's coming up on the 30th. Correct. And um, that's where y'all can get the foreclosure information. Um, Net's been putting the events up so y'all can get that information. And Miss Carlis? Yes, I have one that's coming up on February the 27th. And it's the Journey to Surrender talk show. And Belize Spivey is also going to be a host on that as well with me. <laughs> and that uh, we're, this is the hostess would be Shaniza Volkov. Um, Vol 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 and it will be streaming live. And it's on WG WGNM TV and then CTN, which is the Christian Television Network out of Middle Georgia on Channel 46. Okay. Okay. Well, Wonderful. awesome. Um, India, you got something coming up? Yes, I have an empowerment summit that I am going to be a part of, and that is this weekend on February 23rd, and it will be in the Tampa Bay area. And so it will be um, a panel of about 10 to 11 entrepreneurs, business owners, and other leaders in the Tampa Bay community reaching out to Tampa Bay. Okay, awesome. So, guys, I want I want everybody watching, you know, kings and queens and everybody in between. I want y'all to pay attention and get connected with these ladies. You'll cont continuously see information about what they're doing and how to connect with them. And so if you're out and you hear somebody say, hey, I want to open up my business, please shoot them over here to this lovely lady over here in the brown. <coughs> Excuse me. Because she can help you get your business set up right tell you about all those little things that they don't tell you when you start in a business so you can set up a meeting with her <coughs> excuse me and um get you going in that area you know um there's so many resources at your feet and i want you to pay attention to the people that are bringing you the information these ladies up here have a heart of gold. They're operating out of their love zone. They do the things that they do because they care about people. You know, it's not about the money for them. It's not about trying to impress anybody. It's simply because this is the journey that they're on. And I'm glad that we kind of bumped into each other because people's journey, sometimes, you know, you cross paths with certain people and some people mean you good and some people don't. So you have to always be using your discernment for that, thank you, thank you, Ned. <clears throat> you have to use your discernment and you have to recognize when you see good people um, how to, you know, be a blessing to them and how to come in serving. A lot of times we think that we need to run the show, but we don't. We just need to offer some support, you know. Um, there's a lot of organizations out here that do similar things, but... Not on my coughing rubbed off on you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so now is the time, and that's all I gotta say about that. Now is the time to for us to pay attention to how we're loving ourselves, how we're taking care of ourselves, how we're how we're remembering those trails that were blazed before us. That's what this love and black history awareness is all about. Remembering the trails that were blaze in front of us i know for me i'm so connected to my ancestors because their blood their dna is what runs through my soul and my spirit and this is how i choose to serve by on this platform of media and not just um here on this platform but also all media like social media print media you know we have so many 
avenues at our disposal to help educate people. Yes, so, right. um, so that's what I'm most proud about. And ladies, you know, y'all make me smile all the time. <laughs> Just so, you know, I get so tickled when I see them post anything. I be like, oh, they're doing that. Why didn't they tag me? They don't be tagging me. I be finding out on my own and, you know, tagging myself. And, well, why are you not even in there? That's okay. I'm tagging myself anyway. So if you come on over. Because we have to, you know, like I, I say to anybody, what does it cost, especially because a lot of us are on social media all the time, what does it cost to just like and share other people's information? It doesn't cost right. anything. Why is it so much like, oh, no, I don't want to tell nobody about that. You can't hold these secrets. You you are a blessing to be a blessing. That's right. And I think That's if correct. we realize that we are a blessing to be a blessing, then right. we can help bless more people. Would you agree? Correct. I yes. do. I definitely Amen. agree. Yes. I definitely yes. agree. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, so until we meet again... Hey, y'all, it's been fun. Yes, it has. It's yes, been it lively. Is. Please connect with everybody that you need to. Uh, one thing that I want to mention, leave that flyer up, Nat. Uh, Wake Up Winnie for Entrepreneurs starting Monday. Yes. We're going to talk about mental mindset on your money. Y'all haven't seen one side of me. Y'all going to see it next week because I am so laser focus when it comes to your business you got to have a clear vision not to just be saying i'm doing this because i want to help everybody but clear visions of what do you want what do you need and who do you need to go get it because somebody got your money that's right when it comes that's to your business right. and you right. need to figure out who it is and 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 some of the keys that we're going to go over we're going to start tomorrow morning 6 11 on the I on the Wake Up Winnie for Entrepreneurs, y'all could join that on Facebook. I have a question. What's your question? Do you have a late show? You know what? <laughs> that it, it's it's re it's, it's replayed. <laughs> See, this is what I get. You know, I, I don't care nothing about these late birds. I'm up at four o'clock in the morning. My day is like I'm over with by six o'clock. I'm done. I'm I'm done. I don't do nothing. My daughter say the same thing. Ma, won't you go lie? You know, yeah. I don't care nothing about that. By eight o'clock, I gotta, I'll be ready. I gotta do what you know. You can watch it on the replay, and you put in there what you put was put in there, Lakeel. I am enough. Replay. Oh yeah, replay. Lakeel be up with me every morning, <laughs> watching, participating. Yes, she does, and she know all the rules. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. That's where I'll be tomorrow. I see it sometimes. I see it sometimes. Yeah, I know you do. Up under them eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I love you. So, <clears throat> listen, kings and queens, it's been fun. We always, always, it's a pleasure and an honor to let us come into your life. And uh, we appreciate you. I appreciate you. I just want you to remember this, that in life, you are powerful beyond measures. You are great. You came here for a divine purpose and for a divine reason. And it's up to you to understand what that purpose and what that reason is. And if you get your mind right and start to believe and focus on the things that matter to your heart zone, you will go far beyond what you ever could imagine. So I want you to do me this favor until we meet again. Open up your imagination and imagine where you want your life to be. And then take a set a course and do a plan of action to get there. And know that right here is a platform where you can get in and you can express anything that you want to at any time as long as you believe that you can do it. That's it's right. me, Wanda D, the Motivational Queen. I love you, and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Bye for now. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Wanda is considered one of the most passionate and positive people you'll ever meet, both personally and professionally. Her inspirational mentoring, sales, and customer service training has dubbed her to be Wanda D. Hollis, the Motivational Queen. She launched Wanda D. TV, a revolutionary online real estate talk show where local businesses and community leaders discuss their services, issues, and concerns. Wanda is passionate about helping people achieve their goals and dreams. She has gone on to pursue many passions, including her I Am Enough talk show, having a seat on the West Georgia Board of Realtors, author of inspirational and motivational books, 
and also a strong supporter of several nonprofit organizations within her community. Wanda believes that there's no such thing as bad decisions, only regrets of not making the right attempt. For speaking engagements or to book her for your next event or conference, please visit www.iamenough365.com.